Welcome to InfoSource, a presentation of Berkshire Healthcare Systems, a not-for-profit, consumer-centered organization committed to fulfilling the health and residential needs of the communities across Massachusetts we serve. I'm your host, Jenny Sutherland, and with us today is Dr. Kevin Mitz from Berkshire Orthopedic Association in Pittsfield. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Jenny. Oh, what a delight to have you here. It's um, nice to be here. We're going to talk about some exciting things, but the most <coughs> exciting thing I want to talk about is who you are. Before doctor, you were Kevin. Right. Tell us a little bit about you. Um, I am uh, an orthopedic surgeon with Berkshire Orthopedics, but I am a father. I have uh, okay. three children. One is um, out of college, one's in, and one's graduating high school this year. I've been here in Berkshire County for 15 years after serving okay. in the military, and, um, and I'm very happy to be here today. Very How's good. That? That's very nice. I <laughs> okay. want to thank you for your service. Thank you. I appreciate that. And when we met prior to um, the, the show to talk and get to know each other, you said that you did all kinds of things, and one of your favorite things to think about was when you did you jump out of a plane. Right, a helicopter. Yes. A helicopter. Yes. Not just a plane. I didn't jump. I repelled. You we repelled. Were way up there. Right, right. So you were like a, a, a Kevin yo yo. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and I went a little too fast and burned my hands, but that was a that right, was okay. But you survived. It was worth to, it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So again, thank you for your service. I'm uh -huh. glad you're in Berkshire County, and I am glad you're on today to talk about the services that you offer and, and your group offers. So um, let's get into um, what's available in our area. Out of Berkshire Medical um, Center, we have uh, Berkshire Orthopedic Associate, uh, Associates and the Orthopedic Associates of Northern Berkshires. And both work out of the hospital and can do procedures there. And you are with Berkshire Orthopedic Association. Can you talk about that practice for yeah, a little bit? Yes, Berkshire Orthopedic Association is, is about a 50-year-old practice. Okay. Started in the late 60s, and um, we still have one surgeon um, from the early days, from the early 70s. He's retiring this spring, Dr. Uh, Cohen, Lawrence Cohen. Fantastic. Now we are um, six surgeons and four PAs. We operate out of, uh, we work out of two offices, one okay. in, in Pittsfield and one in Great Barrington. We do surgery at both Fairview Hospital and at Berkshire Medical Center. Oh, that's terrific. I didn't realize that, um, and that's probably easier for some of the folks who, who don't want to travel up. It definitely serves a need in South County. That's fantastic. Right. I, I love to hear that this gentleman, this doctor, has been with that, that group for 60 years, did you it's, say? He, well, he started in the early 70s, early so seven. you can do the math there, but he um, he's really one of the reasons that we came. He's such a great doctor and a nice person. Um, and um, we really enjoyed him, and um, he, you know, made some commitments to the practice and to mm -hmm. us when we came, and he's carried through on all those. And he's also a very good surgeon and a good doctor. And so. I'm sure, with, I mean, we're going to talk about a, a pretty innovative procedure next, but, I mean, he, he must really be fascinated with what you're doing, and you must think about what he's done in the past and what he had to work with. It so. was a totally different world when he was coming out, you know, um, as far as... You know, um, advancements and techniques and advancements in what we do and how we do them. Um, certainly, um, I think today um, things are much more, uh, not necessarily cookbook, but mm -hmm. much more technical and much more um, planned. And okay. I think um, in the old days, it's almost like being an old pilot. You know, sometimes you just kind of fly yeah, by the yeah, seat yeah, of your yeah, pants, yeah. and today there are protocols for everything. Sure. Um, sure. So it is a different world. All right. and. Um, you do different procedures. I read online that you do like 80 plus procedures. Um, can you talk about a couple of those? And I know we want to talk about one specific at the end. Right. I, um, I do. Um, that's one of the nice things about orthopedics is that we it's can do so many different things. It's true. And um, we're not really focused on just one part of uh, or one organ, if you will. Um, although it's the musculoskeletal system. So we do, I do um, arthroscopic surgery, you know, rotator cuff repairs, mm -hmm. anterior cruciate ligament surgeries, knee arthroscopies. We do fracture care, including um, geriatric fractures like hip fractures and others, mm -hmm. um, but also trauma. We're a trauma center. Uh, we're now a level two trauma center. We've been level um, one in the past, but um, we're level two right now. Um, and, uh, and then joint replacement surgery. Um, our practice also offers hand surgery. We have a, a hand, hand specialist or an upper extremity specialist, and he does yeah. complicated hand reconstructive procedures. And that's, I know a lot of people that have had things done with their hands, and that is intense and this, amazing. This um, surgeon, Dr. Nancalis, his name is, he's, he's gifted. 
very cool. He's a very good surgeon. Well, I think we're lucky to have him. Well, I think we're lucky to have uh, all of you in Berkshire County, so that is great. Um, we want to talk about the procedure that you do, the anterior hip surgery, right? Um, because it's so different than what if someone says <clears throat> you need hip surgery, people will think, oh, all right. I'm going to go through all of this, 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 and this, and they might put it off and they don't want to do it. And then I find out that you do this new technique, this new procedure. So let's talk about that. Yeah, the anterior, the, the, um, anterior hip surgery is a different approach to the hip joint. And mm -hmm. you know, the hip joint is kind of down here, you know, and um, you uh, can get in from the front, the back, or the side. And the anterior hip uh, procedure is getting in from the front. And it's a newer procedure. Okay. The traditional, the most traditional hip approach is from the back side. And um, it's a somewhat of a larger incision, a larger approach. And it is a, you have to cut through some muscles to get in from the back. Whereas when you go in from the front, we spread the muscles apart. It's almost like spreading a curtain okay. um, apart to get into the hip joint. And so, um, you know, in theory, they um, hurt less, mm -hmm. uh, they recover more, and um, there are specific advantages of the anterior hip. The anterior hip um, surgery is, um, hurts less, patients have less pain. Okay. Patients don't have to worry about dislocation, and it's a little complicated, but the posterior hip, somewhere between two and 5% of posterior hips can dislocate okay. after surgery, so we protect people. There are positions they can't do. They can't sit in low chairs. They shouldn't cross their legs, you mm -hmm. know, for the first couple mm -hmm. of months from the surgery. And anterior hips don't have to worry about that. And so that gives them the confidence to mobilize quicker because they're not concerned about which position they're in. Um, and then some of the technology that we're using with the anterior hips um, in the operating room, including live x-ray, and we use some digital navigation devices, that allows us to reproduce limb length, um, to see where the components are going real time in relation yeah. to the patient's anatomy so that we can um, dial in, if you will, yeah. exactly where they're going in real time and instead of looking at an x-ray afterwards and saying, Ooh, I thought that was going to be in a little different orientation. You know? And that must have been a switch for you, per, you know, to have it right here, getting the information as it's happening. Yes, uh, it really, it's really very useful and it has totally changed the way that we do hip surgery and I think that, I think it's a much better surgery which is why I started doing them three and a half years ago. Okay. And I have, I've done maybe one posterior hip since then. And it was a patient who had some other considerations. But out of 400, 450, something like that, you know, over that time, um, I mean, I'm sold on it. I mean, it's amazing to hear the, the recovery time and, and the up and about. But when, when you stress the pain, and, and, and that's what, you know, you as a doctor and me as, as a person, we all as people don't want people to have pain and the fear of hurting themselves. So to hear that there's less, you know, maybe dislocating it after it's done is right. amazing. But how you explained it, I, w I was, I'm like, how's the show gonna go? We're gonna talk about a procedure. And you said the curtain, and, and that made so much sense to me besides parting all this muscle from behind, right. um, which is gonna be painful. So. I can totally appreciate that. Now, some people, and you mentioned, aren't good candidates for this surgery because they might have other medical things going on? Primarily people who have had other posterior surgery. Okay. Because if they've been, if you've been in from one way, you don't necessarily want to go in the other way okay. um, necessarily. And then there may be some patients who are too large to go in from the front right. or too, and some t so larger patients that surgery is technically more demanding. Okay. Patients who are overweight or obese. and. Um, but some, depending on their weight distribution, it may be easier to go in from the front, and others it may be easier to go in from the back, depending on where their largeness is. You know, I'm thinking about that right now. Well, no, <laughs> and, it's, yeah, you're not yeah, and that's your call. I mean, that's I mean, that's the thing to take into consideration. So, with this new technique, they're up and about within that day sometimes. So we get the patient up to the floor. Um, so if, if you're, I did one this morning, and I would assume by now that that patient has been up and walking. Um, when the patient gets up to the floor about an hour after the surgery, um, the nurse will kind of tuck them in and make sure okay. everything's okay, and the therapist come in and try to get them out of bed at that time, usually within an hour or two of the time that they arrive on the floor. That's, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. It's, um, some are able to get up to a chair. Others are able to walk you know, around the, the ward you know, with that aid of a physical therapist. In there. And what a relief to, to that person and the family and, and everybody about that. So it, in the cases that sometimes they need to, to get more care and not 
get going right away, or if they have the the old school uh, hip surgery. Mm -hmm. After that, um, sometimes uh, folks need extra care, maybe some rehab therapy. Kind right. Of stuff. So our typical stay for an anterior hip is about one or two days. Okay. Um, about half of the patients are ready to go home the day after, yeah. and and patients. Um, when we tell them that, they freak a little bit, you know, because they think there's no way I'm going to go home yeah, the day after yeah, my yeah, hip yeah, replacement. Yeah. And then the day gets there and they're like, okay, I'm ready okay. to go, you know. Okay. So about half go home that day, the other half would go home the second day. So if you had okay. it on a Monday, it's Tuesday or Wednesday. Right. But some patients aren't able to go home. No. And um, they either live alone or they are elderly or have other medical conditions mm -hmm. which would preclude them being able mm -hmm. to go home mm -hmm. right away. So those patients would go to, you know, um, re a rehab facility okay. or a skilled nursing facility. All right. Um, and, and part of our affiliates, we have skilled nursing facilities. So you and I are going to take a break and okay. drink some of the water. Uh, and the folks out there are going to watch a clip about uh, Hillcrest Commons and their rehab therapies. You take right. a break, we'll take a break, and we'll be back in a minute. Super. Nestled between the woods of beautiful Burbank Park and the banks of picturesque Onoda Lake, in the heart of the Berkshires in western Massachusetts, Hillcrest Commons is just minutes from downtown Pittsfield, in the heart of the culturally rich Berkshire County. Hillcrest Commons Nursing and Rehabilitation Center offers you the best of both worlds. It's a locally run facility, staffed by dedicated healthcare professionals from the central Berkshire area and it's backed by the expertise and resources of Berkshire Healthcare, the largest nonprofit long-term care provider in the area. Berkshire Healthcare is committed to fulfilling the health and residential needs of the people in the communities we serve. Hillcrest Commons is a proud recipient of the American Healthcare Association's National Quality Award. The Quality Awards recognize members' commitment to performance excellence by continuously demonstrating ever-improving value to residents and other customers. The Bronze, Silver, and Gold Awards recognize overall organizational effectiveness and capabilities and champion organizational and personal learning. At Hillcrest Commons, we pride ourselves on our deep commitment to our community. We offer a broad range of nursing home services, including short-term rehabilitation, skilled nursing, long-term care, hospice, and respite care services. In addition, we also offer more specialized services, including a fully dedicated Alzheimer's unit, a Jerry Psych behavioral unit, pulmonary and ventilator dependent care and therapy, and a full bariatric weight loss program. We proudly offer an elegant, home-like setting that allows our residents the comforts they expect while providing the care they need, including fine dining in our graciously appointed dining room, beautiful outdoor space, ample activities, and private family space. At the heart of it all is a focus on the body, mind, and spirit. Our rehab services include physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Our licensed therapy professionals help restore and maintain the body by focusing on helping our residents improve strength and mobility in order to participate in the activities they most enjoy. These services are provided up to seven days a week when ordered by a physician. Hillcrest Commons is more than a place to live. It's a place to enjoy each day to the fullest. Our activities program focuses on the mind and spirit of our residents by offering engaging leisure and recreational activities, arts and crafts, music, discussion groups, exercise sessions, religious services, and cultural community outings and more. Each resident and patient at Hillcrest Commons receives the highest quality care delivered by our dedicated staff members working as a team. From the nursing staff to our front office personnel, everyone is enthusiastic about the role he or she plays in the lives of the people who entrust us with their care. Our staff is committed to providing compassionate care, using teamwork as their guiding principle. We're dedicated to treating each person with dignity, recognizing their individual needs, goals, and preferences. We create a care plan for each person, focused on helping them achieve the highest level of independence and quality of life. At Hillcrest Commons Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, we're perfecting the art of superior care. 
If you or a loved one need short-term rehab, extra care after a hospital stay, or a nursing supervised full-time living arrangement, we invite you to tour and meet our staff. See firsthand how we enhance the lives of those we serve. To make arrangements or get more information, call 413-445-2300. We look forward to meeting you. Welcome back to InfoSource, and with me still, I'm happy about it, is Dr. Mitz from Berkshire Orthopedic Association. Thank you for talking about that uh, innovative procedure, because I totally am a fan of that now. And um, I wanted to take a second and, and tell you, when we first met, you mentioned that uh, some folks come from other counties to get this surgery. Yes. And so from Franklin County, they'll come out to Berkshire County. And you said from Hampshire County, they'll come out here. And you said you were very popular in an East Hampton <laughs> diner. That's right. The, well, I actually went to that East Hampton diner, uh -huh. and I sat for a while with, with these nice folks and, and heard them talking. And of course, I'm a talker, so I chimed in. I said, oh, you, you, what? Blah, blah. Guy said, yeah, I have this. My wife had this, blah, blah, blah. I said, was that Dr. Mitz? He goes, yeah, that Kevin. <laughs> Mitz. And I say, is he an all right fella? And he said, all right fella, I would have everybody go see this guy. And you know what it was? It was, was how you are with people. And they felt comfortable. So um, I'm from that thank area you. and transplant to this area. So thank you for being that way with folks who are, are just terrified of this. And I'm so glad you talked about that procedure. So that was your little Thank surprise. You. I actually Thank went you. to that diner. Good food there, let me tell you. Yeah, I haven't Should been I, there. What's well, the name of it? Uh, what was it? It's on a, Kathy's, was it? Okay. Or, yeah. Okay. Um, and it, drive your Jeep down there. You can go okay. mudding. Perfect. And then uh, go <laughs> to the diner and see your fans. <laughs> Great. Um, while you're on, you wanted to talk about one other procedure. Um, that's the total joint. Yeah, I want to talk about the total joint program. Okay. I, and I think this is important because um, we have um, our total joint program at Berkshire Medical Center is um, basically the, it's the coordinated program of total hips, total knees, and total shoulders. Okay. And we do, um, this year we're, we'll do about 700, between 700 and 800 joint replacements. And we've grown a lot over the years. That's up probably nearly 500 joints in the last five years. Wow. Because we've improved our quality. And okay. it's almost like the field of dreams. You know, if you build it, they will come. Okay. And um, what we've managed to do through our total joint program, we have a team, we call it a um, orthopedic clinical operations team, okay. if you will, and it's a multidisciplinary committee. What that means is we have the internal medicine doctors, we have the anesthesiologists, we have the preoperative folks, we have the case managers, we have the um, skilled nursing facilities and the physical therapists, pharmacists, everybody in one room and we examine the ways that we're doing things and how we can do things better and we come to consensus. And so every patient who comes in, no matter who their doctor is, will have the same treatment that's based on sound evidence and good outcomes. In other words, um, what's the best way to do things? Because there is a best sure. way to do things. Oh, sure, sure. Um, from medications to therapy um, to implants that we use. And our coordination of our program has directly led to an improvement in quality and to happier patients, you know, there's no doubt. Yeah, I mean, just hearing that, that whole uh, uh, amount of talent that goes into these teams and then to have, you know, ongoing improvements and, and, and changes, um, so, and that's what draws more people in to get the surgeries and stuff now. Right, well, because um, we do, you know, you hear about numbers and you hear about quality mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you hear about infection rates and satisfaction rates and things of that sort. We track those and take them all very, very mm -hmm, seriously. Mm -hmm. And um, we certainly take every uh, deviation, if you will, from mm -hmm. the way that we want things to go. We, we look at all of them. To and get the best practice. To try to, right, to get the best practice and to have the best outcome for our patients. And I think that that's why people are happy with what we do. And, they, and the best word for us is patient word of mouth. Yeah. Like yeah. the diner. Yeah, know, no, it's or, true. It's true. Yeah. You got some fans there, <laughs> and um, and I think a lot of it is people feeling comfortable, um, and they still remember the old school hip surgeries where someone's out, mm -hmm. and to do the whole team approach. That's 
Right. That's amazing. It's good. Oh. And so we have, you know, it's a, it's a very, I, I, I think that I do good surgery, um, but I'm backed up by a very good team. Mm -hmm. And without them, it doesn't matter what I do, you know. No, it's true. So it's yeah. really a very good team, and I think that's important to stress. So. Well, I I, th I think that is is a nice nod to to the whole team, and, and that's people should feel even more comfortable because it isn't one player on the football team that right. makes a great team, um, and you're a great quarterback, um, but you need everybody there for that. Um, so when someone they get a referral from their primary doctor, right, um, and then they come see you at your practice, is that how that starts? Yes. And then um, if they've been through everything that they need to do, there are a lot of conservative treatment measures, non-surgical okay. measures that we use okay. for people with arthritis and osteoarthritis, which is the most common condition that we treat with joint replacement. But if somebody decided that they needed a joint replacement, mm -hmm. they're enrolled in our joint replacement program. Usually it's at least a month to, okay. to check off the boxes, if you will, of the things that Before you need Before you to get do. to surgery. Right. Um, there are physical exams and blood work, and there's a joint replacement class to take at the hospital. Wow. Um, there are dental screens. Um, we even do cultures of the patient to make sure that they're not carrying s strains of staff sure. that they might bring into the hospital sure, and treat sure. them appropriately before they come to the hospital. So you have to go through all of these different um, checklists, if you will, before mm -hmm. you're ready, and that usually takes a few weeks to get through that. I like that part of the, the, uh, the education. Um, so those are classes people take? Yes, we have a joint replacement class. It's okay. offered at least twice a week. Okay. And it's offered in different locations in Berkshire County, um, day, days and evenings. And you meet the therapists. You meet the nurses who will take care of you. You meet the case manager who arranges for home care or skilled nursing okay. care as, as appropriate. And um, it gives you just kind of a sense of comfort in what to expect for the procedure. Yeah, I mean, I think that dispels some of the worries, people, the unknown. Right. I don't, I don't know what this is going to look like. I don't know, uh, and you show them that. Right. Um, it's really uh, expectations are yeah. important, you know, for people to try and have some idea of where they're going with it. All right. And I like, you know, that you look at other things to do before the surgery. Um, even though I, I believe in all of these techniques and new practices, um, and and when we when we were talking, you, you were you were talking about doing yoga and healthy eating, and so I was going to ask you for your top ten health health advice or five, depending on. Yeah, that, that probably the number one thing is um, is probably movement. You know, just to, move. to move for it, people move just it. to move and be active, no matter what it is, but to have something that you do. Okay. Um, it, it could be yoga or it could be going for walks or going for hikes or riding your bike or having a regular exercise class, but movement, mm -hmm. um, because, uh, because movement leads to number two, and number two is diet, you know, mm -hmm. um, having a healthy diet and exercise helps suppress diet, but it also people feel better when they exercise and they think, gosh, maybe I won't have that, maybe I'll have this, mm -hmm. and so those two kind of go together. Um, you really want 10? No, I was okay. just kind of milking it there. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> well, Sleep, I knew <laughs> don't yeah. drink and drive, don't smoke, wear your seatbelt. <laughs> don't annoy people bigger than you. Yes, exactly. You know? <laughs> Those are some health tips. <laughs> exactly. Um, but that movement, I, I think one of the things, and you probably see this, is people are in a little bit of pain, so they don't want to move. And sometimes you need to. You need to move. And physical therapy is something that we recommend before surgery. We have a... We we call it prehab program. So when somebody's okay. enrolled in our joint replacement program, they go to physical therapy before the surgery to prepare them, um, and it makes them feel better. And it also prepares them to be stronger to come through the surgery. So. I, I think that's really cool, and and that's something that people don't. When when I'm in pain, I my hand hurts. I don't want to move it. Right. And that's one of the things I need to do exactly. is move my hand and work it out, and to have therapists there to help me. And then I, I get used to that. So, right. Um, and it just um, if you move it, it gets easier to do each time. I got to remember that. Yeah. I'm gonna Movement. try to take a walk when we leave here. I'm that's gonna right. walk. <laughs> with my knees that are a little arthritic. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> right. Right. So Dr. Mitz, out of the things that you've seen in your career, what's the technique that has amazed you the most? We were talking about the gentleman who's retiring this spring. Yeah, um, the technique, I think, um, honestly, I think the technique that's transformed my practice the most is probably this procedure. Okay. Um, be because it has, um, I found that 
number one, I'd like it. It, it was okay. hard to learn, and I like it. And um, there aren't as many people who do it because they, uh, it's somewhat of a risk when you begin a new procedure on your patients. Sure. Um, because you do have to learn to do it and how to get good at it. Yeah. Um, so I think that that um, probably is the most important procedure. The most important thing, however, oh. if, we, if we have a minute to talk uh, about it, is do. probably um, le you know, what happens like, you know, behind the office door when it's closed. Okay. You know, in the communication yeah. thing. And um, because you really are, what you learn as you go along is that people really say things to their doctor you know, that they would not say to anybody else in their life, okay. you know, and they're trusting you with this, mm -hmm. and you have to learn to give them time to, to mm -hmm. talk and to kind of um, relate to you, you know. So that's probably the most important thing I've learned. I think the anterior hip is the most important procedure. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing everything um, and coming on the show. You're, you're a great, great man, a great doctor. I'm, I'm, I'm part of that East Hampton fan club now, <laughs> though, that <laughs> diner. Um, and I'm going to thank you for watching. InfoSource has been a presentation of Berkshire Healthcare. Thank you for watching. I wish you good health and good life. Bye for now.